أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين Respected scholars, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jameean wa rahmatullah. For the happiness of Hazrat Zahra e Marziya, for the enlightenment of the graves of your marhumeen and of the graves of the shuhada, ulama and siddiqeen, for the safety of the followers of Ali Muhammad around the world, and for the safety and hastening of the reappearance of Hazrat Baqiyatillah al A'zam, Arawahun al Fida, please recite another loud salawat. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is Ahman and the one who is Rahim. It's an honor to be given this opportunity to come and speak in front of you brothers and sisters on the personality of Imam Khomeini. And the topic that I've been given today is Imam Khomeini's impact on the youth. And before I get into it, I'd like everyone to look at the person who's sitting on their left and then the one who's sitting on their right and take it in and look at those that are sitting around you and realize that this is the impact of Imam Khomeini that 33 years after he landed in Tehran you are all gathered here year in and year out to remember a man that many of you never met, many of you never saw, many of you never even heard. But yet, you come every year and you remember him. You come, you listen to speeches about him. You listen to speeches about his life, about his struggle. You relive that moment on February the 1st, 1979, when his plane touched down and it was like the Atlantic Ocean had been opened and the people swamped around him. The moment that he overthrew a 2,000-year-old monarchy, you hear about his interviews. You hear about his character. And then away from here, throughout the year, you hear anecdotes about him. On Valentine's Day, people start putting up Facebook statuses, putting up links to the relationship of Imam Khomeini and his wife. They note how Imam Khomeini would place a sponge under the tap of the sink so that his wife would not be disturbed when he woke in the middle of the night to do wudu, to pray Salatul Layl. They mention his disapproval or him becoming upset when his wife would do some of the housework. And the wives look at their husbands and say, see, read this. See, 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 see Imam Khomeini, see what he did, he didn't do anything. And the husbands, incidentally, then turn to the ulama and say, look, what do you want us to do now? You tell us she doesn't need to cook. You tell us she doesn't need to clean. I have to pay her if she wants to feed my children. I, she doesn't need to work and I need to provide for her. Imam Khomeini has snookered me. What, what shall I do? Come Christmas time, the posts change. And people start putting up that story of Imam Khomeini as he was in Paris and giving out gifts to those that were around him. After hearing all of that, the question arises, is that the impact of Imam Khomeini? Was his impact that he gained our admiration and our love? Is that the impact that he wanted to have? Brothers and sisters, our love, our admiration is not a virtue on our part, nor is it a virtue on the part of Imam Khomeini. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the Quran. 
within Surah Maryam, Ayah 96, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says that the one that believes and does good actions, that Allah will place their love amongst the people. This is the fulfillment of that oath. Is the impact of Imam Khomeini upon me that it gives me political clout or it gives me a reason to disunite or disassociate from, disassociate from those that may not hear hold him as dear as I do? Is the impact of Imam Khomeini upon me that I call for unity with other sects of Islam while choosing to disunite myself from the lovers of Ahlul Bayt? Is the impact of Imam Khomeini upon my life that he is an encyclopedia of anecdotes and idioms that I can place upon my Facebook status? Is the impact of Imam Khomeini that every year I attend the Quds March but on the way stop off at a McDonald's to get myself a Coke is the impact of Imam Khomeini upon me that I protest, that I petition every year but then as soon as that protest is finished as soon as that petition is signed as soon as that letter has been sent I return back to my day job until the next massacre, until the next protest, and then again I reawaken to stand up for the oppressed. Is the impact of Imam Khomeini upon me that I gained a Shia identity, but one that I very easily choose to hide when times get hard? Is the impact of Imam Khomeini upon me that every time I hear about him, I hear his name, I hear the anecdotes, the stories, a tear is brought to my eye. Is that the impact of Imam Khomeini upon me? If it is those that I've said then that's not an impact. That's simply what we feel. They're just effects, not an actual impact. They're partial effects upon me that are either semi-positive or negative and possibly even destructive. So the question should not be what is Imam Khomeini's impact upon the youth or in fact upon everyone the question should be that what should have been or what should be the impact of Imam Khomeini upon the youth because what we've done is we've taken a part of Imam Khomeini's life and forgotten another part of it. And when we ask this question in that way, that what should be the impact of Imam Khomeini, it brings us back to square one. It brings us to the ability, it brings us to that part where we're again reviewing, we're reassessing, we're re-questioning ourselves. Many of us have taken the spiritual advices of Imam Khomeini. We have taken his Islamic guidance. We know his advices to the youth. We know his advices upon self-building. We're trying to pray regularly. We're trying to bring about Salatul Layl within our lives. We're reading Quran more. And we've largely implemented many of them why? Because they are within our comfort zones. 
The other aspect of the life of Imam Khomeini isn't. So we choose to leave it to a side. And what is that? That is his socio-political role. That is his socio-political guidance. We are more than happy implementing his religious and spiritual advices, but not so keen on implementing the socio-political ones. Why? Maybe it's because we don't want to rock the boat. We're a little embarrassed, a little insecure, or we don't care. Or we believe that we cannot make a difference. And so it's just better to sit at home and let the powers that be do what they need to do because I can't make a difference. Brothers and sisters, the biggest lesson that we learn from the life of Imam Khomeini is that one man can make a difference. One man can make a difference. We learn from his life that even at the top of the political chain, one can maintain their Islamic identity. It doesn't mean that he has to or shave off his beard or she has to remove her hijab or that they have to attend every gathering where there is alcohol present just because it will help forward a political career. We learn from Imam Khomeini that if you want to make a change, it won't happen from the sidelines. Protesting from the sidelines will only get you so far. But actually getting involved and making a change within the society that you live in will work. Getting involved in the system to help the weak of your society. These are the messages of Imam Khomeini. And there are weak in our society. Often when we talk about the weak and we talk about the poor, our minds wander to the Oxfam or the Cafod adverts of Africa and how people are suffering over there. Yes, they are. But don't detract from the fact that there are people that are weak within your society living here. There are children who are malnourished within this society. There are families that do not have enough money to buy one meal a day for their children. Imam Khomeini's message was to go out to the weak. What have we done in order to help the weak in our society. In fact, let me rephrase that because sometimes we use the word weak, uh, we use the word we in order to diffuse responsibility. If I readjust that question and make it what have I done to help the weak in my society? What have I done in order to bring about a positive change within my society? The famous story of the son of Mahziar is known by many of you. We'll go over it briefly. He wants to meet with the Imam. He's constantly doing the A'mal. Eventually, he's given the opportunity to meet with the Imam, missing out on a large section of the story. And he says to the Imam, he said, I've searched for you day and night. I've cried for you. I've done nudba for you. I've done all the A'mal. Why did it take so long? The Imam replies, it is because you did not go to the aid of the weak in your society. You did not go to the aid of those that were weak. What have I done for those that are weak within my society? What have I done to bring about change within my society? We learn from Imam Khomeini that it is only if you get involved that you will make a change. Brothers and sisters, talk is very cheap. What have I done to become a decision maker? Complaining is very easy. Pointing fingers at others 
is very easy and it makes us feel good. But Imam Khomeini's greatest message, as was said previously, is that religion and politics can go hand in hand. And it can make a difference. But that difference will only be made if you get involved. And I don't mean attending another protest. I don't mean making an intention to attend 10 protests a year. Yes, they have their role to one side. But actually getting involved in the society that you live in, actually bringing about a change instead of complaining, but actually changing. You don't like status quo? Then change it. But for that, you have to get involved. Stop standing at the sidelines. For many years we have lived within this society, our parents came, and now many of us have been born and grew, grown up in this society, but yet the complaints are the same. And has anyone done anything to change? That's the important part. Help the poor within the society. Doing simple acts of good. How many of us have ever thought of taking our youth group to volunteer in the local soup kitchen that gives soup to the homeless? How many of us have actually thought that we will go out on those cold winter nights and those that are sleeping rough give them a blanket? If you don't want to be involved in politics, these are also the avenues that we can go down in order to bring about a positive change within society. Remember what Imam Khomeini did in Paris, going back to my initial point. Why was his impact so great? Because along with his political ideology, he actually showed that he was a man of God. When he was living in Paris, he went out at Christmas to give the people the gifts. What was the impact of it? Shaykh Mutahri narrates in the book that talks about the, some of the stories of him. He had a woman open the door and began crying. That this man, he's not even Christian, but yet he's given this presence. That's the impact that one can have only if they choose to. We still truly haven't understood the impact of Imam Khomeini. So as a result, we haven't been able to implement that within our lives. But when we're able to address both the spiritual and the socio-political lessons that we gain from the life of Imam Khomeini, then that better society will come our way. Because had we done the same as Imam Khomeini, had we done the same as Imam Khomeini, that love and admiration that me and you have for that man would be prevalent within this society for each of us. Because we chose to help. The impact of the man was this, that those that never even met him, like yourselves, still remember him. Those that lived a world apart, an African man, the day Imam Khomeini dies, is found sitting, crying. They say to him, what are you crying for? He says, my father has died. They say, we never met your father. He says, no, Imam Khomeini. You never met him. But yet, this was the power of that man, that those that never met him, called him their father. And why was that? Because of his political idea and his religious ideas and because of his wanting to better society. Imam Khomeini should be a unifying factor for us 
not a disuniting factor. Very often, we that admire him the most push away those that do not admire him as much. At this time, the words of Imam Khomeini still ring true. Unity is what is needed in order to overcome the enemies that are trying to topple justice. To overcome the oppressors, we need to be united. The impact of Imam Khomeini, his lessons still need to enter into our lives. And when they do, then the love and admiration will also be aimed at us instead of us being vilified or being made the bad people within society. One man, one woman can make a difference only if you choose to. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullah.